This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, and I there's not run. even a dog there. I So basically, when he's sitting and focused on you, he's at full self-control. The more excited a dog gets, because I don't think that he's so, like there's some dogs that are so anxious and just hate the walks the whole time. There's excitement, he likes to come out. So the more excited a dog gets on this little scale, the further from self-control he is. With him, of course, with excitement, there's a mixture of anxiety. You know, with the dogs, he's already on the lookout for dogs. When this leash goes on, he's probably already getting anxious knowing like, oh, I'm gonna see dogs out there. But he's excited as well. So when you put the leash on inside and that shoots up to here, you guys go out the door, he's up here. So before you even leave your place or step outside, he's up here on this, on this scale, yeah. So. What our goal is going to be is to keep him in this range because if we direct him in this range, he teaches himself to stay in that range. So basically what we're gonna do is work to keep him with you mentally 100% of the time. If he sees a dog up here, like if you're just walking, especially you know with Jeff, if he's just has a full leash ahead, he's in his own world completely up here and sees a dog, absolutely no shot. I wouldn't even be able to control him or get him back at that yeah. point, you know? So we have to really work beforehand to keep him here to work through it. I love him so much. Yes. Then he puts me on notice. Yeah, you worry about your safety too. We'll get you okay, Nagnes. Like so the fact that you're trying to just get his focus, you're right on track, like, cause that brings him back down to here or closer down to here. What you're probably doing is like a quick glance of focus that's not bringing him all the way back down here. And that's what we really need to teach him to do. Will he be more relaxed in the building if we go in? Okay, let's go in there. I'm gonna give you this so you can feel that. So I'm gonna go over all my golden rules of training with you. It's super crucial for everything that we're gonna do. So my first rule is that you only ever wanna say his name positively. So his name should be a command essentially to focus on you. Just human nature when he's like reacting or going all over the place to be like, Magnus, no, don't do that. Yeah. I'll take Everybody I'll does it. Yeah. Yes. One, it adds more negativity to a situation he's already deeming as negative. Two, you're gonna get what you want a lot faster if you say it positive. If you're calling him and saying, Magnus, no, don't do that. What's more motivating? The thing that he wants or a negative tone? He's gonna be like, screw you, you know, why should I listen? So just kind of biting your tongue and almost like being fake, like Magnus, over here, yes, goes so, so far. And you have to always think like, to be able to obtain his focus no matter what, he has to always know that when he comes back this way and looks at you, it's always going to be positive. So work on that on your walks like until I see you next just constantly Magnus up here Magnus yes good Magnus yes Magnus yes good boy yes good boy Magnus yes yes Magnus yes you just have to make sure when you're saying his name there's no questioning on his end like, oh, if I look, am I gonna be in trouble or not? It's gonna be like, to be able to get his focus when there's a dog or something really, really motivating there, he has to know like, oh, my name means treats, positivity, praise every single time. It's very hard. In the house, if you hear a dog barking or he knows a dog's coming. Magnus! Call him. He has an amazing response to his name. Yeah. Utilize the hell out of that because so many dogs I'd be saying Magnus right here, and it would take a little while for them to turn and respond to it, like immediately. Magnus, yes. See, he's so willing to respond, he just needs to be directed to what to do instead. And that leads me to my next rule is that redirection is key to shaping behavior because behind every single bad behavior, there's a reason behind it. And we don't usually think about like, oh, why are you doing this? You know, what feelings are you having? It's like, no, I don't like that, don't do that. But I always tell people like, if I had, you know, like an episode of anxiety and someone's like, no, don't have that, don't do that, it's not gonna make it better at all. So the number one thing that we're gonna be redirecting him to is that when you feel 
threatened, whatever you may be feeling as to why you're reacting at dogs, look to me instead. So the fact that you're getting his focus right there is perfect. Um, and it's, you know, we'll do a little bit more with that. So it's not just, it, we've got to be able to control distances to really get him to work through it in different environments and everything. But managing it, that, that's absolutely perfect. Shifting his focus up here. Magnus, up here, yes. Same kind of thing though, if you're walking by the grass, instead of being like, no, don't get that leaf right here. Yeah. His focus is still on that. You know, you have to shift his focus off. And I forgot to tell you, I always say, if you are to teach a dog one thing, it should be focus. If you always had his focus, you could get him to do anything and you can prevent him from doing anything. And focus is so overlooked. You, you know, you see all these dogs walking out, they probably have 0% focus on the owner, you know, the whole time. It's like, pulling, what's this, what's that? Hi, yes, right here, right here, hi. Yeah, so right here. Magnus, yes, yes. I know if I have his focus, he's not going for the leash and I'm gonna get what I want a lot faster and he's gonna understand what I want him to do then. All you have to do is focus up here all the time. Yes, 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 good boy. Yes, very good boy. The other thing, I think you said like he's a counter surfer too, right? So you have to think about why is he jumping on the counter? pretty obvious because he wants the food. So just telling him like, no, don't do that, isn't going to make that feeling like, oh, that I want food, just go away. You might get what you want in that instance because you can tell that you're upset, but the next time that feeling comes back, he's gonna revert right back to the jumping up, right? Like you can tell him, no, we don't jump on the counters, but then you would have to redirect him to sit instead. So how you should tell me that you want something up there instead of jumping up, sit in front of it. Doesn't mean he's always gonna get it, but you have to give him that other outlet with everything that he does. Right. You have to give him that other outlet, otherwise he's just gonna resort back to his natural instinct every single time. So my next rule is just to not overlook when he is behaving, which I'm sure you don't. I'm sure oh, you give no. him tons of praise. But the things that are overlooked are focus and response to his name. Like what I just told you, like praise the crap out of him every time you say his name and he looks at you or comes to you because being able to get that instant focus is everything. So praise him. If you're on a walk and he just looks up at you and checks in, yes, good boy. Let him know that's the right thing. You know, he's got all these new emotions and behaviors that are happening in the last few months. It's kind of like his brain needs to be retold what's right and what's wrong. I think people expect dogs to know what's right more than what's wrong, but you have to go back, especially when you're having things, behaviors like this, let him know that the only job he ever has to do is look to you, look to you, that's it. And he's gonna be way less stressed. Magnus, yes, what a good boy, yes. Yes, also, notice when he looks up at me, the leash goes perfect. He's at my side, not pulling. Yes, see how it like loosens right when he looks at me? I don't have to do anything. The first thing you do when you see a dog, even if you see it, the first thing I do, is, and he would be by my side, is to tighten up on the lead. Yeah. And she said, all you're doing is putting him on notice. And mm -hmm. she said, what you should be doing is letting up. And I said, I feel so uncomfortable doing that. Right, but so I, I see where you're it. coming from as well. You'll get more comfortable with this process. So you'll feel more comfortable not doing that. The reason why you do that is because you don't want to be sent flying. It's not just, you know, a lot of people, their natural instinct is to be like this. And that has the same kind of idea as like negative reinforcement training, like a shock collar, a prong collar. It's like when you tighten on the leash, if he's wearing a prong collar, he gets pinched. So that adds more negativity to it. So he's like, oh, you know, mom is upset. I have more of a reason to be protective. So what we're gonna do, Magnus, this way, this way, yes. What you should focus on doing, what I always tell people if you see a dog right now, and we're gonna get to the point where you're not gonna have to do this, is instead of moving with your elbow, you should be moving your body. Magnus, this way. Because although sometimes if he's set on a dog, there will be a little bit of pulling, you know, because if he's this way and I'm like this, 
yes, there's gonna be a little bit of pulling, but you're going this way. So use like the runaway method, you know, just like over here, over here, yeah. And I always tell people to shift all of your anxiety and nervousness into getting his focus. Magnus, hi, yes. Because I know if I can have his focus, he's not staring at the dog. And this is going to be really huge. Like this, that's what I do when I work with super aggressive dogs with my dogs. My dog's right here and they're about to probably literally attack him. The only way that I'm gonna be able to resolve anything is staying calm, madness, and shifting the focus up here. If there's ever a little bit of tightness, you know, that's gonna set the dog off. Um, if I say no, it's gonna set the dog off. So just taking all of that energy, if I'm nervous, into, hi, up here, yes, good boy and knowing that everything is gonna be okay. Dogs can't multitask. If he's focusing on you, I mean, they can to an extent, but if he's focusing on you, all of his energy isn't on that dog, you know? Right. Hi, yes. Now, would you at that point cross the street? Yep, get as far, so what you're gonna do right now is get as far away from the dog as you can, not elbow jerking, going this way. Magnus, this way, yay, good boy, this way. So let's say the dog was coming by. I'd go back as far as I can and then try to make him work through it. So the other thing is, even if the dog is past, think about on our little scale, when he sees a dog, he's up here. So if you continue your walk, you know, let's say he saw a dog, was reacting, then we continue the walk, you're riding that line the whole time. So if he sees something, he's more likely to react. So even if the dog is gone completely, bring him back down here 100% or as close to 100% as you possibly can. So dog is gone. We're not gonna continue the walk until you calm down. Sit. Yes, good boy, it's okay. Good boy, yes, okay. Now we continue, you know? Just getting him to relax so you start off from square one the next time you run into something. So, so don't overlook when he checks in or when he responds to his name. Praise him for that, okay? So the next rule of mine is to never repeat a command. Have you heard that before? Yes, and I have, I'm guilty of it. Everybody is. So on average, an owner says a command three to five times. Yep. And so if you get into that, you know, routine of doing that, when you say something once, it means absolutely nothing. kind of like feeds into, you kind of fed into his separation anxiety. You know, that's why I told you stay over there because we want him to know being anxious. Right now he thinks like being anxious, pulling, pulling, being in his own world gets him to you. And it that feeds into his own separation anxiety. So basically I had to take him all the way out there and around the corner. What will get a dog over anxiety is if you can shift their mind elsewhere. So if he's in the crate, freaking out to try to get out, he should not get to you, because that's the ultimate reward with separation anxiety, is getting to you until he settles himself down and sits. You know, shifts his mind elsewhere. If you give him a command, so I had to take him all the way out there to be able to then sit. Because then he let his mind go on, oh my God, I gotta get back to her, I gotta get back to her. If you give him what he wants when he's in that state, it'll never be resolved, you know? So. Once he finally shifted his mind off of being so anxious about you and sat, yes, he regained self-control of himself and then I allowed him to come back. Ideally, you know, what I would have done is make him work all the way up to you. Like, okay, you're pulling back in that mindset. I'm gonna get you to sit again until you can get back up to her. And I do that myself. Good. When I, if he gets out of control, I do exactly that. Perfect. I slow him down when he starts pulling on the lead. I'll stop right there and say sit, and we'll just stand. I'm, I'll just stand right there with him. And make sure you get the focus. So the one that you noticed, like when his mind was just focused on you and he sat, he was only half listening to me because mentally he was a hundred percent still being anxious. So if that happens with a dog, the sit isn't enough. He says, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Just the sit isn't enough because you'd rather get 
no sit. And like, if there's a dog right there, you'd rather get him to just break his focus on the dog and look up at you than sit and still be mentally okay. on the dog, you know? Yeah. So if he's trying to sit with um, his back facing you, back up until you can get him to sit and be focused on you. That's super important with a dog with anxiety. Yes. So make sure though, not only um, does the not repeating a command help with stubbornness, but it also helps with anxiety. So it helps dogs overcome anxiety if he knows like, okay, she said sit, she means it. You know, the follow through is equally as important. Um, she only said it once, I'm going to have to do it. If, if he's in his own state of mind, like being anxious and you say sit and just in a focused state of mind, that one sit means nothing, he's gonna have no motivation in his anxious state. Now where I am when I will say, magnet sit if he does and I say it again. So how do I back up yeah. to understand? So basically what you should do is if you still have his focus, like if he's looking at you and just testing you, just be patient and reinforce the hand gesture. I don't know what you usually use for I sit, but I usually do I this. Do like this? Yeah. Perfect. Or I do, if I want him to sit, I'll do this. Sit. Or like that? Or yeah. Down. So patience is the number one thing. If though you say sit and he's just focused over there, you're not gonna wait forever for him to just right. come back to right. you. So then you can say, Magnus, Magnus. What had I asked you to do? So when he does come back, so you can basically say anything else in the world except for repeating sit. So if I say sit, and then he looks over this way. No. Magnus, Magnus, what did I say? Yes, good boy. So you still don't repeat it when he comes back to you. Gotcha. Always that, make that sure. Yeah. yeah, yep. You can say his name. Or sometimes I'll use. So if he does the action, you don't repeat it. Bup, 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 up it's here. It's like when he's in his crate and screaming and crying. And if we have a reason, like we have an inspector in or somebody to make a repair, if he stops barking, I give him about five or ten minutes. And I'll go in and say, good, quiet, Sit. and I'll let him out. I don't let him out when he's screaming. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I already had said sit. So just ignore him completely. Oops. If, if I ask him to do something, just ignore him. Like even talking to him like that, it's kind of feeding into what he wants. He's like, yes, help me, save me, don't make me do it. So here's a little bit of stubbornness. So this is good. <gasps> Magnus, <gasps> Magnus, you can do it. Ah, yes, good boy. So if you can break through that, you know, that time it would have been very easy to give up on. Like he's like this, he had the stubborn stance. Um, but I still didn't say sit more than once when I did in the very beginning. So yeah, he knew what you were expecting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he knows. That's the other thing. People are like, oh, he forgot. A hundred percent he did not forget. You know, he's very smart. He, he They'll just try to test you as much as they can. So super important for that stubbornness just like that but if you don't have that solid base of him being obedient right away and then you throw him into an anxious state and try to ask him to do something there's no way he's going to get himself out of that anxious state how you get a dog out of the anxious state again is shifting their mind to something else so command training is perfect for that you know when you're anxious to try to get him to follow a command is how you solve that kind of anxiety with the other dogs so we have to make sure that he knows, okay, oh no, she said sit. I'm really anxious, but I know I have to do that. So he'll kind of fight on that line of like, naturally I wanna be here. But once he comes over to this line and starts following it, that's when you see huge strides and improvement. So super, super important. And then the next rule is just, uh, he's like, I'm mentally exhausted. <laughs> we haven't even done a lot today, mister. I say I'm not doing it. I know. I know, it's okay, it's a lot of work. Um, so the last rule is just, people always ask like the amount of time you should spend on training. What you should do, especially on these walks, is instead of, and I'm glad you don't aim for like a long walk or anything, but I always tell people don't aim for a distance, aim for a time. Right. So we're going out for 10 minutes, yeah. 
if we only make it right to the front grass so you pee because that's he's not even with you mentally you know we're gonna wait for him to stay with us and focus on us um because i always say like a dog if he thinks he's ready to go somewhere he's not ready to go so if he thinks he wants to go and say hi to that dog he's not ready to go he should first settle focus on you then when he doesn't care about moving forward that's when you go forward mm -hmm. so if that's what it takes you know we'll go more in depth in it with the training but if for 10 minutes or eight of those minutes on your 10 minute walk he's sitting in the lobby already like i gotta get out there i gotta get out there that's nope exactly what he does. okay we're gonna sit here until you become more relaxed because time and just shifting his focus to where you want it to be is your yeah. best friend right so think about when you're sitting in the lobby and he has 98% focus out the door, two on you. you want to experience it because I'll show you. Well, we can do it. I think he's not. Yeah, we'll do it next time. Yeah, but so I'll meet you in. Door, he, will, he is just bananas. I'm sure. He's ready to shoot out. Yep. Yeah. So if he's 98% there, 2% on you, time and just shifting his focus to that 2% wherever you want him to right. get to is everything. Most people give up after three times of calling him back. So if you're like, you know, he's wanting to get out the door, you call him to focus here. He sits there for one second, then he's back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise him when he looked up at you, though. Do you see how he stopped in between and looked at you? I didn't that. Yeah, yeah, you gotta notice that. Call his name positively. Magnet. Hi, Poopy. Hi, Poopy. Good boy. Hi, Poopy, guy. See how with that direction, now get him to sit. Okay, now get his focus. So the okay, focus then. is huge. Sit. Don't say it again. Just do the gesture, follow through with it. Yes! You can see how with just that direction, he's like, oh, I'd gladly look to you. You know, there's not the stubbornness during that, which was amazing. Good boy. He's like, I don't want that. He likes to I know Hi, buddy. That was really good. Good boy. Yeah, that was the good. One the one that walked by the other day, I sat right up by the gate, so it was right there. And it was too, they were mastiff, a mastiff, and that's another thing, jumping up, and he does that a lot. A mastiff and a ridgeback, and he's two big dogs. Yeah. And he was ready to take them away, but I sat right there by the fence. I didn't back it. Good. So, that was really good, Magnus. He, it's amazing to me that he senses a dog's presence when I wouldn't have yeah, oh, for no sure. Idea. Yeah. So we were just letting him go to see what he would do, of course. But the second he starts getting alert, you should be madness, 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 trying to get him up here, yeah. not letting it go. Okay. Don't ever trust him if he's getting alert or barking. Because so and many what, people. What does he do then when the dog, if you're out, if you're, will he eventually not care if another dog passes? Yeah, exactly. So what we're going to be doing is kind of reprogramming his mind. So the second he becomes alert, if we let his mind stay focused on that thing that he's alert on, negative thoughts just accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. Yeah. So what we do at the same time is redirecting him when you're unsure, shifting his focus to here. What that also is doing is bringing his mind to a controlled place, looking right here so that we get that neutral controlled thought. Then we gradually will let him have more and more mental freedom when a dog comes by. And as we do that, we keep it very controlled so that then it's positive associations. But to get there, we first have to take away all mental freedom. So it kind of seems counterintuitive because it's like, wait, but I want him to look at the dogs and be cool with yeah, it. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So to get to that point, we take away all mental freedom to make sure it's controlled. So it's like, hi, don't even look at the dog is what your mindset should be. The second that he heard that jingling, I'd be like, Magnus, Magnus, hi, look at me, look at me, have a treat on him, hi. Yes, don't even look, don't even look, just look at me, yes. So that eventually then, 
pretty soon he'll see a dog and just know that he needs to look at you. Okay. So that's the stepping stone to get to the positivity, which makes it a, a hell of a lot more manageable for you that yeah. he's just like, okay, yeah. even though he's not sure about the dog, it's not necessarily positive yet. It's still just looking to you because- see, I didn't know he caught, he was looking at me. Yeah. He was looking at the dog. He so. kind of broke his focus, which takes a lot of self-control to do, to be like, I want to be barking, but kind of checked in with you. Oh. I'd be like, praising the crap out of him for that. Yes, good boy. This is what you do is look at me. Yes, good boy. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That's okay, he's a good boy. He's been doing better and then we woke up this morning. He hasn't eaten at all today. Oh, he's, he's gonna be tired. Yeah. So just that last piece that I was kind of touching on is that if he has 2% focus on something, 98% focus, somewhere out, or 98% focus out the door, two on you. If you sat there for 10 minutes, that 98 will decrease and the 2% will increase. And some increase is better than none. Right. But like, think about it. If he's just so focused and you're like, Magnus, Actually, sit. I have done that, Kaylin. Uh, we have done that, but I, but I uh, and need to reinforce it another way. Just go I longer, go longer. Yeah. yeah. So usually okay. people give up after you try to shift his focus like yeah. two or three times. Cause it's like, I've even sat on, there's a chase lounge in there and mm -hmm. I've even sat on the lounge until I knew that he had calmed down. Perfect. So, Perfect. Yeah. That's really good. Do that. Focus on that a lot on your walks. And then if he just goes on and goes potty, that's okay to try to keep it in as now, control as possible. My question is for now, dealing with this, knowing that we're going to be walking and we're going to be, and thank you for the command. Um, we do leave it or drop it and doing it one time. Yeah. I'm, I'm very guilty of that. Everyone is. It's okay. What do we do when we go out and I'm feeling insecure here um, to take him out on the lead? I don't feel comfortable. I, and I know that I, if you're doing it right there with the lead like it is, mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable right now. I'm gonna have to do it. You can it, walk him on this the entire okay. time. Okay, well that's what I wanted to do. That's All okay. Right. And through this process, I think maybe what we should even do the next time is just start the desensitization with Grizzly because that's where we really see the most results. You will get so much more comfortable with the process through this, like it's the training you because he absolutely feeds off of your anxiety, you know? I know he does, I know he does. So if you're and super anxious, do the, do the minimum walk, like his walks during the training process, 100% okay to be short as long as you're focusing on the mental work of it. Gotcha. Keeping him with you mentally as much as possible. Okay. Besides when he has to go potty, then he needs to look back up at you. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Yes. So I, if you will, um, send I'll send you this. Me. I'll send you my golden <laughs> rules of training too, good, good. so that Jeff and you can be on the same page with everything. Yeah, I'll share it with Jeff. Perfect. Sure Perfect. Um, and then maybe we'll start the desensitization right away next time, meeting at like a little area, low key park. <laughs> People Just think that dogs don't see smiles. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Oh. I know I smile. He's such a sweet boy. He, he really is. Sweet.